Welcome to Brand South Africa's Global Reputation Study Results Launch. Uh, I'd like to officially welcome you. Um, and uh, just to start off, we'd like to thank all of our stakeholders that have graced us with their presence. We look forward to a very robust engagement and um, understanding the importance of the roles that we respectively play. Our very good friends from Bloom Consulting have one of the most accurate descriptions of the act of nation branding. It is the act of strategically building, connecting, and managing the systematic flow from perception to emotion within the scope of reality to, minimi to minimize distorted images and maximize nation brand potential to attract and appeal through a positively reinforced reputation, which simply put, is really about telling the story of who you are as a nation and carefully curating that story into a narrative that seeks not only to appeal to the hearts and minds of the world, but also keep you top of mind in, in key areas. If a nation does not make a conscious effort to brand itself or manage its reputation, the world will still have images and opinions of that nation formed by external entities such as the international media. As a result, the simple association of a nation's name will reflect, will reflect on product services associated with that nation, greatly influencing investing, buying, and traveling decisions. As one of the oldest and most established nation branding agencies in the world, we occupy a niche space that although largely misunderstood, plays an integral role of how the nation views itself and how the nation is viewed by others. As a country, our greatest exports or in nation branding language, our central idea, the emotions that South Africa evokes are those largely related to our peaceful transition from apartheid to democracy. The values espoused by, by one of the world's greatest leaders, Nelson Mandela, and more so the resilient and dynamic character of our people. No two nations are alike, and there's no other like South Africa. As the custodian of the South African nation brand, Brand South Africa has the unique task in strategically working towards shaping perceptions and curating narratives in order to ensure a steady stream of investment appeal, interest, tourism attraction, export expansion, and to, to increase South Africa's soft power and influence. Brand South Africa's mandate requires the organization to clearly understand the reputation, competitiveness, and perceptions of South Africa in key international markets. As part of its approach towards ach achieving this mandate, Brand South Africa draws insights from its global reputation study research and ongoing monitoring of nation brand performance against a range of competitiveness, reputation, and governance-related indicators. In March 2022, Bloom Consulting was given the task to measure the, the performance of South Africa in terms of its international reputation and perception. The analysis was based on three pillars that reveals current challenges and opportunities for Brand South Africa. The study saw the use of three different approaches in which South Africa was compared with 10 markets across four continents. In addition, the country was compared in relation to perceptions around exports, investments, talent, tourism, and general reputation, providing a holistic and broad map on perceptions and their, nuance, their nuances across 13 key markets. In addition to the survey data, the nation's digital identity was also measured, providing an objective view on current challenges and opportunities for the nation brand. These results are no longer nice to have and instead provide an important set of insights that are geared towards providing our key stakeholders with strategic information on how South Africa can continue to remain top of mind amongst international audiences. As Brand South Africa, our role is to set the scene while our stakeholders such as Invest SA, Tourism SA, and other state entities create a favorable environment in order to convert interest into an investment, travel decision, study location choice, and or to buy a South African product. The ultimate purpose of today's engagement will be to seek to remind South Africa of its immense potential, continued global appeal, and more importantly, a call to action to be better ambassadors of the brand because we are all the brand. Please remember to use the following hashtags, hashtag believe in SA, hashtag Bloom Consulting, hashtag Brand South Africa, hashtag Nation Brand, and direct all your followers who are unable to be with us in person to join the live stream 
on all Brand South Africa platforms. Thank you very much, and I hope you find this uh, engagement as insightful as we believe it to be. We've worked very hard uh, as a team, and we're very grateful for the insights that we've been able to gather. And I hope that we leave here with a, a renewed sense of pride in who and what we are. Thank you. My name is uh, Jose Torres and I'm the CEO of Bloom Consulting. Bloom Consulting is a company that is fully dedicated to nation and place branding or city branding, if you like. We established uh, the company in 2003, nearly 20 years, and this is the only thing we do. We measure, we work with nations, we build strategies and we implement them. All over the world, all over five, con five continents, from Australia to Middle Eastern countries to South Africa, Latin America, and of course, uh, 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 Central America and all, of, all parts of the world. Uh, we recently uh, published and we constantly publish a series of uh, documents, research that is available online and it's free uh, for you to access, but it is part uh, of our nature. Now, what brought us here and why we're here, why we're talking about nation branding, why we're talking about uh, Brand South Africa? The first thing I would like to say is that I have bad news and I have good news. The bad news is that I have a presentation of 70 slides with approximately 100 graphs. So that's the bad news. The good news is that I took drama in high school. So everything is going to be okay. So when we talk about really uh, the, the, the scope and the reason why we're here, as uh, very well presented by Shamiso, um, is to understand the perception and the reputation uh, of South Africa, how South Africa is seen internationally. We're going to cover this in a multitude of areas. We're going to go deeper into how South Africa, uh, what is the perception of South Africa alone, what is the perception of South Africa with other markets, and also facing other uh, countries. So for this, we have used three different types of data sets. We use global surveys, so basically understanding how and asking uh, the global stakeholders how they see South Africa from different perspectives, which you will see in a second. And as Shamisa was also talking about, also the digital identity. So we use digital demand and digital supply that actually measures what the world is searching online uh, about South Africa and uh, what is showing up about South Africa. In other words, who's building the narrative of South Africa. We have eight countries plus one so in, uh, that we compare South Africa with. Um, it's always from a perspective of um, an emerging brand and a more established brand. So of course we had to compare South Africa with other nations uh, in, uh, in Africa, in Latin America, uh, in Middle East and also uh, in Asia. So altogether we have eight countries plus one, which is the UK, which normally performs really well in terms of nation branding, just to see how South Africa is uh, against uh, all these benchmarks. So it's very important to put this into relative terms. Now the analysis was done, was done in 10 markets plus a three, so we have 13 markets where we analyze the perception of South Africa. And there's gonna be a lot of information that I cannot show up here because my drama capabilities are not as good as it can go. So, but I think it's really important to discuss when we talk about a nation branding, um, a nation brand for, the, for, this, for this matter, actually, the, for this purpose. Um, it's important to understand that what we're measuring is really the nation brand, right? So what is the nation brand of South Africa? Perceptions, and you see, it's a, you know, I talk about nation brand, talk about perceptions, talk about reputation. There's a lot of combinations of things. So in order for us to explain what we're trying to measure, it's important to explain what nation branding is, right? Or for that matter, nation brand. Um, and then how that brand is performing internationally. So when I talk about nation brand, nation brand is this, in a nutshell, is when I say the name of the country, the emotions, the feelings it generates, that's the nation brand. And that's what we want to measure, is how this perception is affecting different groups of stakeholders, because this perception has an impact on transaction. So what you think, what you feel about a country impacts the willingness of you to buy a product from that country. So the, the classic made in effect to invest in the country, visit the country, relocate to the country, or just like the global narrative, which is the general reputation, right? So we call this the central idea, and this central idea impacts these five audiences. Now, you see here this constellation of things around the brand, which is really um, an explanation that the brand is established not by the things you say, but rather by the things you do. 
And then you can talk about the things you do, but first you have to do them, right? So the way you build a brand is through actions, activities, and policies. And if they are aligned with one central idea, as we call it, one narrative, then you build this perception that we talk about. A classic example is the example of New Zealand, which maybe it's not exactly this word, but they have one core element that they all guide. Or it's the, the, the founding base of everything, right? So because there's a consistency in the actions and the activities and policies they do, they build this nation brand, right? So nation branding, and then this raises another question, nation marketing. So it's two completely different things. And they are most often they are confused and they're the, the global audience is confused. And when I say global audience, I mean the practitioners confuse the difference between nation branding and nation marketing. It's important to put this align to not, not to say that it's one or the other, it's, it's both, but there's a specific role that each plays. Right? So when we look into nation branding, there's a sequence of events. So nation branding comes first and then it's nation marketing. And a nation branding is about building perception. That's what nation branding is all about. And nation marketing is about generating a demand. It's the transaction part. It's two completely different things. And you know, one of the things when, when how you build perception is through actions, activities, and policies. And how you build demand is through the product offer. It's through promotion. And the way you're going to do in both is completely different capabilities. So for instance, on nation branding, on, on, on building perception, on building those actions, activities, and policies, it's really about stakeholder engagement, making sure that everyone is aligned, making sure that everyone is conscious of what a brand is, what Brand South Africa is doing here, and giving the results and showing the areas that we have to work on. Policy making, yes digital identity and marketing. And then you're going to say, but, but I see marketing here twice. Well, you know, is nation marketing? No, it's marketing about the actions, activities, and policies. And believe me, I don't want to go too much into detail, but it's not about a big ad saying we did something fantastic. There's many ways that we can talk about marketing. On the demand side, it's about offer design. It's about partnerships. It's marketing the product. It's about loyalty programs. It's, 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 it's returning. And in essence, Nation branding, it's about emotion and perception. Nation marketing is about demand, which is about lead generation and about transaction. So if you are a constituent and if you are like the president, it's like, well, this is a no brainer. I want the one on the right, <laughs> right? I want lead generation. I want transaction. I want more jobs. I want the taxpayer's money to go into something that we can touch. That's absolutely true. But without perception, you don't get demand. You can advertise whatever you want. You can promote whatever you want, but if you don't have a positive perception, you will not convert. So there's different entities that should be responsible for these two things. On the, on the branding side, you have nation brand institutions like Brand South Africa. And on the demand side, you have the IPAs, you have the NTOs, the National Tourism Organization, which is really the core. It's what's important for the country. And they too are equally important for the nation. But it's important to say, like, look, one is responsible and accountable for, th for something, and the other is for another, right? So it's very important. If you don't have a positive perception, you don't have a better demand. And you may even say, well, I already have some perception. I can put money in for uh, promotion and to generate demand. And I will always get results. Yes, but that same rand, that same dollar, that same euro will have a much higher return. Instead of one to one, it's going to have a one to three, it's going to have one to 10 or one to 100. That's how important the brand is. And I'll talk about that in a second, right? So today I'm going to talk about perception. Yes, I'm going to touch uh, in some aspects of demand. And we have other documentation that talk about demand. But when we look into perception, it's really important to also outline and the study we're going to show and the results are going to be predominantly focused here. Another point that is important to make is this aspect about, well, you know what, I'm not going to take so much, paying so much attention about perception. And the answer to this is like, it's okay. You know, governments sometimes tend to, I don't care so much about the, the perception. Don't worry, someone else will. And it may be not in your favor, right? So a nation brand institution is also responsible, of course, is not to control the narrative. It's impossible to control the narrative, but it's also to contribute to the narrative. It's also to have a say on that narrative. You need to ensure that your narrative as a nation is being taken care of, at least managed, at least monitored, and also 
contributing to that perception, not have others doing this for you. This will happen if you don't have an institution like this one. So, on the perception side, and we talk about perception, it comes a very interesting question, which is how do you build perception? How can I contribute to that perception? And these two boxes you see here, if you knew how long it, you know, it took to build these two boxes, how many conversations, how many discussions with all other practitioners in our company, um, in, the, in the literature and so on, it's staggering. But it's so simple as this. The way you build perception is through either influence or experience. That's it. And this is where nation branding, this is how perceptions are formed. So influence is really the actions where you, uh, or predominantly is the type of activities you have to do to, to work on, and it's predominantly really important for the people that don't know the country, they have not experienced the country, have not bought the product, has, have no idea about the country. And on the experience side is what we call familiars, right? So people that know the country, have bought products, have interacted with the country. So these two audiences, so depending on people that, on the left, people that don't know anything about the country, influence is gonna play a, a predominant role. And the ones that have experienced the country, experience is gonna play a predominant role, and that's really the, the familiars, right? So you're gonna see this icon, perception, influence, and experience. But then this <laughs> brings another conversation, which is, what is perception? Oh my God, here we go again. I thought I would finish this. I thought I had all the boxes done. No, I mean, it's important to understand and we have to, to define what's perception because it's really vague, right? Like perception, positive and negative. What is that constitutes perception, right? So, so you, you, we have to do kind of an explode view of, of perception. Right? There's an explode view of what perception is. And, and, and we have identified approximately 11 types of perception, or let's just call it clouds for simplification purposes. Cloud as imagination, right? So the explode view of perception is these 11 clouds, right? So these are the 11 clouds that constitute perception of the country. And this is what we will be measuring for South Africa. After this, I'm going to analyze and I'm going to show you how South Africa as a whole is performing versus other countries. But right now it's important to understand South Africa, how is South Africa performing in all these clouds that you see here? And you see there's a scale here from one to five, one or zero, very, very negative. No country has this, no country has this. You may have start having twos, number twos and so on, to five, and five is astronomical. No country has five, so four. So you will be in the range of two to four, approximately four, four, four point something. So let's look how South Africa is performing in all these things from a perception point of view. Remember, I'm going to show you perception. And what I'm going to show you is how the non-familiars, people that don't know anything about South Africa, how they perceive South Africa in these clouds, as we call them. You can see in purple here um, four main types of clouds where South Africa performs truly well. And this has been because of a consequence of your work of also other things that you didn't control but you were able to measure. And these are the things, which is sports, culture, people, and history, which is absolutely fantastic. This is one of the most important things when we talk about nation branding. Space, place, and nature. And here I think really, we think looking at, the, for instance, Tourism South Africa play the predominant role here. And again, see when I said that Sometimes there's a, or if I didn't say this, I'm going to say sometimes you have on the demand side, yes, you contribute to the perception side and vice versa, right? So you see here, it really played a role. Entertainment and art scene. So it's seen as an amazing, see this is what we call tier one type of perceptions within the clouds that I mentioned, which is absolutely fantastic for a nation, right? So congratulations on that. Then we have tier two. Tier two are the ones that we go and we talk about, well, things we have to watch out for, we have to start looking for, which is like products and services, sense of belonging and community, integration and inclusion, and the educational level. So the educational level, not so much the quality of the universities, but if how well educated is a culture, right? So this is tier two. And you say, well, how do we define these tiers? Well, normally the love mark, as we call it, is a 3.5. So these are a little bit under the 3.5. And these are the three ones, tier three, the ones that you have to really watch out for. And again, this is perception. And you see the icon on the left, it's where the influence pay, play the role, right? So this is people that are not familiar with the country. This is how they perceive the country, right? So clearly it's about public governance, corruption, etc. 
economy and business ecosystem. Now, you're going to see this here, and then you say, well, this means that there's no, you know, the investors don't see as well. No, they may see even as an opportunity. We're just saying this how they see South Africa. And, of course, safety, security, and crime. So this is really the most worrying one. Now, look at this. This is, and I explained it. again, this is perception, right? Have a look at reality. Have a look at the experience. Have a look at the ones that know the country. And look at the difference. Right? So you perform rather well in almost every front. And look at the gap that you have here. So yes, you see public governance still on the yellow. You see safety, security, and crime on the yellow. And then you're going to say, well, but public governance is a 357, right, Bloom? You said it was 3.5, the love mark. It's true. But for the ones, normally the average is higher once you experience the place. Okay? So it's 3.5 to 4. But just side note to all that. Okay? But so this is the reality. And you see that economy is great, sense of community is great, integration inclusion is great. And also the points that I said that are perceived as such are also great. So we have here another graph to show where the differences are. And we even measure how big is the gap. Right? So you see here, for instance, the positive ones. And you see sports, entertainment, arts, scene, people, culture, and history, uh, uh, space, place, and nature. You see the, the purple dots, right? You see there's a gap, 0 0.65, 0 0.57, so five decimals, six decimals, right? Uh, sports, you see four, almost five decimals, 0 0.46, so 0 0.5, five decimals. And these decimals are very, very important. They may sound like as a number, but we're going to put this number into context. So a decimal is going to be very, very important. So five decimals is a lot. But then you say, why don't you work on impacting, you know, closing the gap of culture, people, and history? And we say, well, because it's like evolving from great to fantastic. It's OK. You don't have to worry about this. You can take them for a ride, as we say. So this is fantastic. So perception is aligned with reality. And it's very, very positive. The ones you really have to pay special attention to is public governance and safety, security, and crime. And safety, security, and crime, you have nearly one point, so 10 decimals to improve. And if you look at the other, other, other ling, uh, uh, ring, this is how far the brand can go. I mean, that's the reality. You should not surpass this. But this is how far you can go as a brand. This is how much you can push the brand to. And that's where the influence is going to play a role. So what does this all mean? And, and, and when we look into safety, security, and crime, and so on, is it negative? Is it positive? Because I saw positives, and then I see negatives. How does this all contribute to the general perception of South Africa? Well, we saw on top of mind when we asked people, what do you associate South Africa with? We analyzed one by one 10,000 people, how much and what comes into mind. And you have, you know, 65% of the dimensions were positive. Of course, Mandela is there. Of course, nature is there. Of course, everything that is great about and also the other things that may not be so positive for the brand are also there. But when you look... Uh, on and all, and this is really, I think, one of the most important slides that, that proves the point that I say, like, you can have a say on that narrative, on also, on, especially on the negative ones, right? So, yes, there are negative things, and when you see in purple, is like, contributed positively towards the South African nation brand, and what you see in dark gray is contributed negatively for the South African nation brand, right? And you see, yes, you have like, you know, the instability, the zoom unrest, et cetera, into 2022. I mean, it was a tough year for the brand South Africa, right? It was a tough year, Omicron, blah, blah, blah. But you have other things that contributed to offset that, right? And that's what is fantastic. And you see like other initiatives, initiatives that you recommended, and initiatives that you took other proactively, like for instance, um, events, government actions, even you know, the, the, your, your, your position uh, towards uh, the Russian-Ukraine war. But what's really interesting to see is this. It's this contribution, it's this mix, and it's all about this that contributes overall to the brand. And, 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 and aside from everything of the things that happen throughout the year and are there, it's fair to say, and, and the bottom line of all this, is that the perception of South Africa has improved over the last year. You have here 66% that says, well, it didn't change. But that's okay, they didn't hear anything, they didn't hear anything. But 31% said it has improved. Last year, my opinion about South Africa has improved. Only a 3% has worsened. So all the fuss, all the things, all the 3%. Everything else was your contribution, was the legacy of the brand, not just the one thing, it's a combination of things. 
And you see this not only from a general perspective or a general perception, but also from investors' perspective, also from tourists' perspective, also from students, from workers. It has improved. It has improved. Right? And why is this important? Because this improves also the willingness to. And what you see here in this graph is the willingness to do business with the country, visit the country, live in the country. Yes, I would live in the country. Yes, I would invest in the country. Yes, I would visit the country. Look at the amazing results, for instance, of doing business and, and, and visiting the country. Tourism, 75% said yes. Export, 76%. And then you say, well, what about the relocation? Students and workers, I only see half and half. It's okay, it's a completely different type of decision that you take in your life. And also, it's important that, because you know, it's tourism, you go in and out, you can stay more, but it's still very important. But invest, different, but live, it's different, right? So take this with a grain of salt. Nevertheless, I'm gonna show you the reasons why people would not invest or live or study or visit and the perceptions or the reasons why yes and why no, okay? So this is the reasons why not. And you see the issue of security is always there. So it's something to pay attention to. And, and you say, well, but I knew this. But how much did you know this into numbers? How important is this to society? And here it is, is Brand South Africa talking about and talking with the right stakeholders and saying, look, and the job of Brand South Africa is not to change this, <laughs> but it's to monitor and, and advise on how to change that. Right, so to talk with the right constituents, talk with the right policymakers to talk about this, right? So this issue, the percentage that said no is because of the safety, security, and crime. But look at the reasons why yes. The, why the majority said they say yes. And again, it goes into the clouds that I was talking about. And it's always about, of course, concerning nature, but about the people, about the values. They love South Africans. They want to have a South African near them. And this is important. Believe me, it is important. So now coming back to perception, we group all this together. We have the explode view as what perception is and all the clouds. Now we group this all together and say, okay, very good. Now I understand the reasons or the things that are there. How much is this impacting at all? These audiences we see here, how much am I performing on these dimensions? We call them dimensions, right? So you have here the rank within the dimensions that we talk about. So first is exports, tourism, and of course comes down later, uh, uh, the ones that want to relocate. But look at the, the perspective of a familiar and non-familiar. And familiar and non-familiar is very, very important to look at. So again, as someone on top, you see the ones with the highest score is people that have visited, lived, bought, have a fellow worker that is South African. And the ones that are not familiar is the ones that don't know or don't heard, they, they don't pay attention to, right? Look at the amazing result that is that in, in terms of, so, so there's the product, if you want to call it, I don't want to call it a product, but the experience section is really fantastic. It's fantastic. And we even look into now comparing with other countries, right? So this is how South Africa ranks in those dimensions versus other countries, right? So you see, for instance, on exports and investment, exports, it ranks fairly well. So you see that probably, and here, although, you know, a decimal is very important, but you see, for instance, the UK as a reference is always number one. But look at the, so you have the countries on the bottom, the legend of the countries on the bottom, but the first graph looking at exports, you have UK, UAE, uh, the Emirates, Turkey, South Africa, Brazil, Thailand, Egypt, Chile, Vietnam, and Nigeria, right? And you see always, like for instance, I would say that exports and investment is on the top three, um, sometimes tied in with number uh, two. Um, so it has a very good performance, a very, very good performance. On investment, you see a decimal a little bit higher, so it will be top three as well, tied in, uh, because sometimes you see it, but it's like by, uh, by centesimal, so that's the reason why it has such a different range. Tourism is very much more competitive, and you see that it's also, those countries are almost tied in, so it's on the top three as well, although you see there on the graph, again, it's by decimals that we're talking here, but it's very tied in with Brazil, and very tied in with the UK. And I stop here for a second, tied in with the UK. I love saying this about the UK. So, Students, amazing result, and workers also very much tied in. Now, look at this from a familiar and unfamiliar. So the same thing, right? 
look at the top line, so the top in pink, what you see is people that are familiar with the country. So a tourism that, a tourist that is familiar with the country. An investor, look at the result of an investor, look at the result of something that has done business with the country. And what we want to do, and the job of Brand South Africa, is to move the needle on the gray closer to the one on the pink, right? That's the objective of, that we have uh, as, as a nation brand. Look at students, look at how much, look at workers. Although they say 50% does not know, it is surpassing all other countries. I'm going to stop again in the UK. Look at the UK. <laughs> right? And look at where it is on the, on the bottom one. So people have an ideal about the UK, but then the reality is very different. So look at South Africa, how spectacular it is. So it's something special about the country. Right? So why is this important? What does this mean in terms of perception? So what you see here is a graph that shows how much you improve in terms of the willingness to, in this case, visit the country, if you have a better perception. So one decimal in change increases a 6% the willingness to visit the country. So remember those graphs I showed the, 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 the perception and the demand? You improve on the left so that you have a higher demand. You remember that there was a gap, for instance, on the security and crime, it was a 1%, uh, sorry, uh, 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 10 decimal, so one point, right? So what we're saying is that at one point improvement means that you improve by 50% the willingness of, of visiting the country, for instance. So this is how important perception is. And we saw this in tourism, and really that it's, it's an algorithm, is, is, is you see here the R, closer to one, the better it is, it's closer to one. So this is a fantastic calculation that is almost linear, right? And look at how this behavior, and this, this is across all other dimensions, so exports, investment, study, work, is always like this, it's always like this. You improve, you have approximately from five to 6% improvement in terms of the willingness to. Now, why should I care as a nation? Oh, I improved this and the willingness. Because if you have a better perception, again, you have a higher demand. So the graph you're seeing here is how South Africa is performing in all those dimensions from a digital demand perspective. So this is how much the world is searching about South Africa. Right? It's an indicator of the demand side. It also measures the, the, the perception side, but it measures the demand. But then you're going to see like, well, it's not really the same rank. Shouldn't it be the same? Yes and no. Um, there's several components that, they, that, 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 that take that action here. So for instance, you see exports and you see Turkey ahead as number one, but in the other rank was not number one. Here's a combination of also the other side, and this is why it's important the demand side, which is the promotion, <laughs> et cetera, about the product and so on, right? The investment side, the tourism side. So when you see tourism, for instance, you see, well, but it ranks fairly low. It's like, it's, it's not so fast, not so fast. There's many reasons why this happened. And this is not, you can control certain situations up to a, to, to a certain level. This is still the legacy of COVID. And it doesn't matter, you may even have better perception, fantastic demand, but the situation is very different from, for instance, in, the, in, in, in Europe, which is a bubble because of the policies and the regulations, much easier to travel and so on. So still, this is dragging the brand and there's, there's not so much you can do. So there's a, it's not so, let's not be so, uh, expecting this to be higher just because you work on those, so those other factors and talent as well. So this is where the demand is coming from. This is the world who's searching for South Africa. You see the US, UK, India have, and Germany have a very, very important role. So these are the markets that are more interested in all the dimensions you see here. And these are the ones that are growing the most. So India, for instance, exports and investment, Saudi Arabia as well for tourism, Saudi Arabia as well, also the US, the UAE, and other markets that may be on the top three but are decreasing, right? So I'm gonna finish with just with five slides talking about what we call the strategic considerations for uh, South Africa as a nation brand, right? What would be our recommendations with all this? What does this all mean? What is that we should be working on? Number one, keep up the good work and aspire to number one. We believe you can become the number one brand from that ranking. It's just a question of working together and making sure that you are doing the, the as a, as a unity, as a, on working in, as a unison on the brand strategy. So keep up the good work and use the leverage on something that you have that is very well perceived about the nation. One is about sports, culture, people, and history, place, space, and nature, and entertainment in our team. 
it's so rich. People love it, and you can just take this for a ride, as we say. The second recommendation is it's time for South Africa to have a central idea. You need to have, okay, so what is the thing that, what is the glue that knits? What is the thing? What is the narrative? What is the purpose of the country? What is that we want the world to know us for? And that, or at least for us to contribute to that. So it's very important to work on developing a central idea, just other, like other countries have, right? And develop a system, pardon for the technicality of this slide, but basically it's a system that we call an on and off brand uh, filtering system, which lets every stakeholder to uh, check if they are on brand and contributing to the brand. So something that you don't need to be an expert, you don't need to know anything about national branding, but if you follow a system, simple system, you're able to contribute to that central idea. So this is the job of Brand South Africa, is to do this and, and to train and to give the information to stakeholders so that they are always on brand. Number three, fantastic thing, fantastic thing that we understood and we saw from the intelligence of, of this, uh, this research, which is talent is an absolute must. It's an absolute must. What we mean by this, it's one of a very, performs really well in terms of perception, really well in terms of perception, and it's just there, you know, South Africa attracts, if, if uh, the correct data, we have the correct data, is attracts approximately 45,000 students, uh, uh, international students uh, to, to the country. But other countries have realized and have created a product, even from the demand side, that attracts half a million tourists, which in this case is um, uh, talent, and it's, we're talking about to, uh, students, to the country. Australia, look at the domain, it's an official government domain to study in Australia. The same thing with New Zealand. Now India is doing the same thing. Chile is doing the same thing. South Africa, it's just a matter of creating the offer and putting it out there. So also, Brand South Africa, what is doing with the study is showing opportunities for third parties to embrace and to take forward. It should not be Brand South Africa to run this initiative, but put it together and get the right stakeholders that if they want to do it, then they can do it. But it's there, it's there. People want to do the study abroad in the country. All the other things you have, they love it. They want it. Take it. <laughs> right? And then nation branding 2.0. As we say, goodbye South Africa 1.0. Hello South Africa 2.0. This is the fourth recommendation, which is who's building the perception, who's contributing to the global narrative of South Africa? Right? Who's building your identity? Who's narrating about you? And um, the answer to that is, is very simple. I mean, search engines play a predominant role in shaping identities and perceptions about places. So the footprint is through the search engine, right? Yes, you have other inputs and so on, and social media also plays a very important role. But if that triggers, if that ticks, you search, right? And you see here always is the search engine is really the predominant source to influence. So what we have done was using uh, digital supply understand who's talking about you. So anything that anyone in the world may be writing, commenting, publishing about you, we got them for any topic. And what you see here is the aggregated list, the short list, 20 contributors of, that are shaping your identity that are talking about you. From one end, you have the ones that are not media outlets, but you can play a role here. You have the media outlets, Right, you can see, and also you have your own proprietary uh, content, right? So uh, uh, tourism and SouthAfrica.net plays a very important role here. So again, it also contributes to the to the perception side, of course, but it's important to have more. Now, I'd like to stop on the fifth one, the BBC. If I would have to choose one to look, place special, the one that is shaping, the one that is influencing most the narrative about South Africa, it's the BBC. Now, is it positive or it's negative, right? Well, the good news is that 65% is positive. So we analyzed everything they published on the top results about uh, South Africa. So we analyzed 300 articles one by one and gave uh, human even interpretation, not even AI. We have it, but we wanted to go one by one. So what is that they're talking about, right? And you can have them talking about positively or negatively, right? And you have from one end, yes, look, space, place, and nature, but look at integration, inclusion, safety and pride, public governance. The ones that you saw in the clouds, yes, you also have economy and business ecosystem, but look at how much these ones match the clouds that I mentioned. Right? So what are they talking about? How to work with them? 
And last but not least, divide and conquer. It's important to revise the governance model and also to stakeholders to understand what is the role of Brent South Africa and where do they play a role in all this. And, uh, and it's important from a governance perspective, from a, a mandate perspective, that nation branding and the institution that is in responsible for managing the perception through influence and experience should have these capabilities and these responsibilities inside even South Africa, in brand South Africa, and have it clear with other partners like tourism, investment, NTOs, DMOs, etc., that that's their role, the part about the promotion of the country. Again, yes, sometimes you go here and there, this is just the guidance, but it's important to have this as a mandate and to measure it like this. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.